Hey guys, and welcome back to Justin Reads Romance. I'm Justin, and today I'm going to be wrapping up the whole month of April. I did not do a monthly wrap up for March, which I'm sad about, but I was looking at the stats for um, this past month, April, and I was like, whoa, I did really good. And I'm not just talking about like the number of books read, I'm talking about the books that I gave like four and five stars. For the month of April, I read 43 books completely. I DNF'd two books, not including the 43. And six of those books were rereads during the month of April. I usually reread a little bit more than that, I think. And 12 of those were new to me authors, so I haven't read any books by them before. I always love to see how many new authors I read per month. That's kind of a new stat that I introduced because I wanted to just keep track of that. How many new authors am I discovering per year? And now for the ratings. I'm really excited about this part because there was a lot of like really good books. Definitely for the month of April, it's skewed towards high ratings. It just was. 16 five-star books. Like what? I don't think that's ever happened. I have an Excel spreadsheet that I'm keeping track of like all my monthly stats that I'm gonna go over at the end of the year and see like what's my best month. But this one's pretty darn good. Two 4.5 star reviews, 16 four star reviews. So that's 16 fours, 16 fives. That's insane. One 3.5, five three stars, one 2.5, two two stars, and two DNFs. I usually don't give one and 1 1.5 stars. Um, I'm not saying never, that's why I always have them ready just in case I meet that book that I'm just like, oh no, you deserve a one star. It hasn't happened yet. I don't think it'll happen this year, but never say never. But is that not insane how many five and four star books that I read this month? I'm really excited about that. I don't like whenever it. I have a lot of three star books. It's pretty sad for me because I always pick up a book wanting them to be four and five star books. I just do. Now by genre, I read majority contemporary. It's always happened. I don't think I've read more in another genre um, this year. Contemporary just always taking the top spot. But historical, since I've read a lot of Elizabeth Hoyt and Eloisa James this month, I have 16 historicals that I read for this month. Very excited about that. No paranormal specific, but I do have um, two historical fantasy. So those were the Juliet Marier books and they have that fantasy element with like the Fae and Celtic folklore with it. So it was really beautiful. I enjoyed those rereads a lot. Four urban fantasies and one sci-fi. My last book for April was a sci-fi. I only read one arc in April, 15 audiobooks. Audiobooks have been killing it for me. They have, they're a huge reason why I was able to read 43 books this month. It's audiobooks. They're a lifesaver. 13 ebooks, 13 books specifically on Kindle Unlimited. I read a lot of books on Kindle Unlimited. I definitely am always searching for new authors on Kindle Unlimited. So yeah, I definitely included a separate category for that and three books in paperback. So audio is definitely what I was leaning towards this month and it's pretty self-explanatory because I had a really busy school month and the only way that I could read the amount of books that I did was because of audiobooks. If I wasn't listening to audiobooks, this month would be a totally different story. And then I also keep track of how many indies versus traditionally published books that I read and they're pretty neck and neck. 22 indie books, 23 traditional books. I like those odds. I like those odds. I like supporting indie authors. Now to go over my best and worst books of the month. My favorite and least favorite books of the month. Two of these books I DNF'd. One of the DNFs, I plan on going back and giving another try. So before I jump in, I had Allure of the Vampire King by Bella Klaus. This is an urban fantasy book with vampires and witches in London and I thought that it was interesting at first but then it kind of took a predictable route and the chemistry with the characters was not good and I found that the writing was pretty bad. I did not enjoy the writing style at all. So I knew before I hit the 50% mark that it wasn't going to be an enjoyable read for me and I should just put it down. And this all happened like in the first week of April. I was just not having it. I wanted my April to start off on a really good foot and so I DNF that one. Then same week I picked up Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark because I really love mafia romances. Jen was reading this series and these books have really pretty covers. So I picked up Brutal Prince. I was not vibing with the characters and I told Jen this. I was like these characters are annoying me and she had the opposite reaction. 
So I put that one down and I jumped into the second book. I ended up by loving the series as a whole and I got to see these characters, Ada and Callum in the background and I like them as a couple as I'm seeing them. So I am gonna go back and I'm going to read them again. Maybe I was not in a good frame of mind whenever I was reading it. So I am going to kind of complete that series and go back to book one. So I could say that I read book one. So I am gonna go back to that one. I wouldn't necessarily categorize the DNFs as the worst books that I read this month though. I just wanted to mention that those were books that I didn't feel like I could push through, but if I did push through, that doesn't mean that they wouldn't have been like a three star or something. So the my least favorite books that I read this month were The Black Fox by Brianna Hale. And I just felt like it was too cliche, too erotica, not enough emotion. I just wasn't in the mood to read this type of book. I do have my authors that write similar books to Brianna Hale that I really love, but I also feel like I have to be in the mood for this type of erotic romance. And it just, I was not feeling anything that was going on with this book. The Zorro element is what actually drew me in in the first place when Tamika was talking about how much she loved Brianna Hale. And I was like, I love Zorro, so I would like to try this author for the first time and unfortunately I really disliked it. So I'm going to eventually give Brianna Hale another try but I'm going to research a little bit more because I want to like the next book that I read by Brianna Hale. Then we have The Affair by Gianna Darling. This was the first part of a trilogy and it's novella length. The first book is novella length. I'm not sure about the other books in the series. Now cheating is not like a hard no for me. It's not a trope that automatically turns me off. I've read books that have cheating in them that ended up I really liking. Not that I like the cheating element, but I liked the resolution or there was some sort of something going on in the background that I don't want to say excuses cheating because I don't like cheating, but somehow, some way the author made it okay for me. And The Affair by Gianna Darling, I was not okay with the cheating. I also wasn't on board for the relationship. I didn't feel like the characters had enough connection. I felt like it was purely lust based because they met basically on a vacation. Sparks were apparently flying and I say apparently because I don't know, I just didn't get the appeal. And then I knew what the twist was going to be. And the twist isn't in the end of the affair. It's gonna happen in the second book but I was pretty sure that I knew where it was going, so I read spoilers for the next book in this series, and I confirmed my suspicions, which solidified that I did not want to continue with this series because it wasn't gonna work for me. It just wasn't. So those are my least favorites that I read for this month. Now for my favorites, the amount of five stars that I read, and I had to pick favorites. I had to pick favorites out of these five stars. How dare I do that to myself? Nobody's making me do this. I'm just doing it. Nobody's gonna be surprised about my favorite books for this month. Nobody's gonna be surprised. So. I have a couple of Elizabeth Hoyts because I binged the Maiden Lane series. I was also on a live show with Jen and Tiffany. Crystal couldn't make it, but Crystal was the whole reason why I started my binge of Maiden Lane series. I had read the first three like five years ago and then kind of put the series down. Crazy sauce because book four, Thief of Shadows, was one of my favorite books for this month. And if I had just read book four when I originally picked up the series, I might have already have read the series a long time ago and fell in love with it. And I'm not saying the first three books in the series are bad. They're not, they're pretty good. But it picks up in book four like crazy. I love Thief of Shadows. Winter was such a great hero. He's also a virgin hero. I love it. And the way that his character was surprisingly very sensual because we did see him in previous books and he was a very like stoic, very buttoned up, you know, stiff upper collar type of thing. His personality was just kind of like a stick in the mud in the previous books. And then we see a whole nother side of him in Thief of Shadows. It was the best surprise ever. And I love the way that he was with the heroine, Isabel. It was just, I loved it. I love them together. It was such a beautiful story. I teared up a little bit while I was reading this. The next one is another Maiden Lanes. It's Darling Beast. I loved Apollo. So this hero, he is mute because he experienced an injury. He was in Bedlam after being accused of murder, of murdering these three friends. He has no recollection of it. And he was beaten pretty badly in the previous book, Duke of Midnight. So he could speak before, but he was like, throat stomped and so he has lost his voice and he cannot speak there's some damage and he's also on the run because he was sprung from 
Bedlam. His sister helped him escape. So he is under an assumed identity and he's working on the restoration of these pleasure gardens. And I really like that this was one of the quieter books of the Maiden Lane series because Maiden Lanes often has these mysteries, these villains that are running around St. Giles like kidnapping children, crazy plots, okay? But this one was quieter. And Apollo, this huge man. He looks like a behemoth of a man and he's like a gentle giant and I love gentle giants. And the heroine is Lily. She's an actress at the theater. She can't perform until the theater is restored after a fire has damaged it. And she has a son, Indio. And Indio and Apollo bond. And I really love how they can have this really strong connection without even speaking. They communicate in other ways and I thought that that was extremely beautiful and I love Lily as a character. It was just beautiful. It's just so good. I love them. I love them so much. I promise this is the final book by Elizabeth Hoyt, Sweetest Scoundrel. What really put this book over the top for one of my favorites in the Maidenland series was because it was so unexpected. I started this book not liking the hero. I started this book thinking Asa Makepeace was a bit of an asshole and I didn't know if I was going to believe that these characters were in love by the end of the book because when they initially meet, they don't know each other at the beginning of the book. Eve Dinwoody is the half-sister of the Duke of Montgomery and the Duke had to leave um, the continent and he tells Eve that she is in charge of the purse strings and they are investors in the restoration of the pleasure gardens that I was talking about in Darling Beast. Eve thinks that they're spending an extravagant amount of money in these pleasure gardens and she does not see a return on her investment. So she goes to Ace and Makepeace and says, I'm cutting your perch, purse strings. He thinks that she is terrible and like, oh, she's not even pretty. They're not attracted to each other at all. And the way that he treats her and he has to suck up to her because he needs the money. He's not doing it because he's charmed by her. He is doing it against his will. But I think that makes their love story even more beautiful because their romance almost feels a little bit more real for it because they disliked each other so much and were not attracted to each other in the beginning. But then it turned into this beautiful, deep, deep loving relationship. It was just so good. It was so good. And the sex scenes in all of the main lanes books, but in this one, I have some of my favorite sex scenes in this one. There's a mutual masturbation scene in the carriage and Elizabeth Hoyt, she has some dirty talking characters and I love that. So that's why so many made this because of the dirty talk. Then I have Broken Vow by Sophie Lark, the same series where I DNF'd the first book, Brutal Prince. Broken Vow is the fifth book in the series, I believe, and the hero is a former army veteran, I believe. And now he kind of works security and the heroine is a high powered attorney and she works for her family who are in mafia, but someone is out to kill Riona and they don't know what. And she's good friends with another mafia family and Dante used to be in the army and that's how he knows the hero. Raylan is a country boy and he's so charming. Riona wants to be taken seriously. It's hard enough being a woman, especially a woman in the mafia. And also at her firm, she's competing for this promotion. And of course there's this other guy that wants the same promotion. So she has to prove that she is just as good for the job. So she definitely has reason to be as cut off as she acts towards Raylan. She does not enjoy his flirting, his casual flirting. She wants to be taken seriously and she does not have time for him at all. And she does not appreciate that now he's her bodyguard and he has to live with her in her one bedroom apartment. And she's like, this is an invasion of my privacy. I'm not a child, I can defend myself. Well, the attempted murder <laughs> gets a little out of hand and I just love the way that this turn the turn that this story takes is so good. Like I said, Raylan is her opposite. He's also a country boy and he has his things from the past that he's running away from, his family for one. I haven't seen him in a couple years and so we get to figure out like what is he avoiding at home? And I loved his backstory and I loved the scenes at the ranch. It was just so freaking good. This is unlike any other mafia series that I've ever read. It's pretty light on the mafia elements and I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Then of course, Sweet Ruin by Cressley Cole. This book was horny. I said this in my weekly wrap up and that's definitely one of the takeaways. When I think of Sweet Ruin, I associate it with Rune, the hero, who is this demon hybrid. 
I believe it's a demon and dark elf. I definitely would have to go double check to see what exactly his parentage is, but he's like one of a kind kind of thing. He doesn't believe in monogamy. He likes to bang a lot of chicks at one time. It's like how the heroine actually meets the hero banging a bunch of nymphs and the problem is his cum is poison so that creates a bit of an issue i love the heroine josephine josephine and it took me so long to figure out her connection to thaddeus which i think we meet him in lothair's book so lothair is when we're introduced to thaddeus or we probably see him in a previous book whatever books start in the island of torture that story arc within the immortals after dark series that's whenever we meet thaddeus but it took me so long until almost the very end of the book was I like that Thaddeus that's Thaddy okay okay so I was just like wow but I love this couple so much it is my favorite in the immortal personal favorite in the mortals after dark series I've loved other books I've in the series I've given five stars to other books in the series and maybe it's because I've most recently read this book but it's definitely going on like spot one with like a bunch of other fives like right underneath it so I just had a really good time I listened to the audio and the audio was fantastic for this one I was smiling ear to ear for the majority of the time that I was listening to this book and of course, I had to include an Eloisa James as well, another one of the books that I binged. All of these books that made my top list were series, a part of series that I binged. So I picked Say Yes to the Duke by Eloisa James. This is not a fan favorite of the series. I also mentioned this in my weekly wrap up that I was very surprised to see that Say Yes to the Duke had a lot of people rating it like three stars and under. But Viola has severe social anxiety and I totally understand why people were just like, if she had such severe social anxiety, why is she kind of okay in the presence of the hero? But I thought that the initial scene where she overhears the hero pretty much bad mouthing her and her sister, it gave her the courage boost that she needed to be like, why do I need to feel anxious in front of this person? He's not even worth my time. And so for me, that explained it enough. Um, as a person that does have social anxiety, I, I do not have social anxiety near to where Viola had it. I'm pretty functioning in social situations. I can get through all of that stuff and everyone has their like coping mechanisms that makes it that much easier to be in social situations. So for me, it was just kind of like, he was a distraction. The hero was a distraction. I loved how turned on he was by her because he was expecting this girl who could barely be in public and here she is standing up to him. And it just worked for me. It worked for me so well. And I just loved it. And I love the wild siblings. I love the family. All right, guys. So those are all my favorite books of this month. I had a really great month. I'm so excited to see what happens in May. I would love to do a repeat and have majority four and five star reads. That would be amazing. I'd love to keep this trend. I'm not saying that's going to happen because I feel like it's a little bit unrealistic. It's all the luck of the draw. It's all what books I pick up one after the other. And it totally helped that I was binging books that I was already enjoying. And so they had a better chance of having those higher ratings if I was already enjoying books in the series. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe to get notified in any future videos that I do. Thank you so much for watching and remember, life's better with little HEA. Bye guys. Thank you.